Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, August 18, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We have price action, we have stuff going on, we've lost the 20 period moving average as they killed them into the close. You want to pay attention tonight stuff's going on. First, we're going to take a look at the big picture. Did the trend change today based on the fact that they closed below the 20 period moving average? And the answer is no. One day doesn't make a trend. We had the phony Fed minutes. We have options expiration this week, the regular way options expiration, which is the third Friday of each month. Doesn't have anything to do with the weekly options. Those are from the casino. The weekly options, or as we like to say, regular way options are from the old school. But the reason I bring this up is because sometimes, not all the time, sometimes quirky stuff happens during options expiration week. So we'll see if they reverse the market tomorrow. And why do I bring that up? Because we've seen this before. We've read this book before. What book is it? It's the Trick, Trap, Fool, and Frustrate Shakeout Operation Recock the Weapon book. Now, what am I talking about? That was a mouthful. Here's what we're saying. So here, they lost the 20 period moving average and they snapped back. Here, they lost the 20 period moving average and they snapped back. Same thing goes here. So they've done it again. They've lost it at least for one session, the 20 period moving average. Are we going to get further decline, maybe into the 50 and another snap back? Remember, we still have this on the docket. It's not wiped off yet until we see a real trend reversal. We haven't seen that yet. Let's not lose sight of the weekly chart. The weekly 20 period moving average is not anywhere close to current price. Not that they can't get there in a hurry. We know the market can take the express elevator down, but the trend is firmly intact. They're riding the 20 period moving average on the weekly chart in the northern direction. That's the big picture. The littler picture is where are we now and why would they find support where we are? And if not, where would they be going? That's a pretty good discussion. Why don't we start there? One thing we can say, and you know how I love this part of the thing, is that this was where they ate time off the clock and then they broke out. So they've now come back to retest this area. But this area isn't like two pennies deep. There's an area here. How do you know where the real spot is or at least be able to narrow it down? Well, if I look closer to the left, I find out this is where they ran up and rejected price. Then they broke out above. So we know that this really is the bona fide breakout area and you can make a case and there's always more than one breakout or breakdown area on every single chart. But we can say that based on the fact that they ate time off the clock over here and this is where the chart or price or the market told you that this particular high 437.92 was important because that was the last price before rejection took place. Now, here's where the part art form and part science comes into play. We can make a case that multiple prices in this general zone could be the stopping point. The reality is we don't know exactly where a stopping point is going to be. And by the way, we have the awareness that they can blow through everything. Why is that? Because eventually, when the market does put in a top, and we don't know whether we have a top or we don't have a top, we haven't really changed the trend yet. We had decent volume today in excess of the average volume, but we haven't really changed trend yet. But the awareness is that the market's not going to necessarily send you a postcard saying, hey, look, the top is in, you need to do something about it. We're going to really kill the market over the next three or four days. Get ready. They don't send you the postcard. They don't send you an email. There's no Twitter account. The point here is that one day, and we've been saying this for a long, long time, you're either going to see an intraday reversal and that's going to be a top, or we're going to see some kind of huge gap down 
and the buy the dip crowd is going to get a pie in the face that day, and they're just going to keep going, and that's going to mark a top. Now, let's talk about tops again. Let's reel back the tape to the other day. How about last week when we said, I have two short-term cycles coming up. The first one really falls on a weekend, so we're using the 13th of August to the 16th of August, and guess what? The top, as it turns out, so far the other day was on what? How about the 16th of August? Now, I know we have the stuff up north, the 448 and change. It disappeared off my screen. I'll get it back another time. But we don't know that they're going there. That's awareness stuff from a number perspective that if they were headed there and they were doing it in a hurry, that would tell us information that most people just wouldn't have. The point is that we don't know which day we're going to wake up to one of those vacuums to the downside, the trap door, the abyss, the black hole. It will happen. We don't know exactly when the market doesn't have a Twitter account. So for now, we take it in steps. We're going to take this step first. 437.92 is important. We're drawing a line in the sand and we're saying, hey, if they come back, and inside or recapture inside 437.92, which was a former breakout area, running a test is one thing. If they run the test and they ricochet off it, they will have recocked the weapon one more time and we turn our attention back up in the northern direction. But let's say intraday, hourly, for example, they start getting below and they start closing below. We have to be aware. They close the day below and another day below, and all of a sudden we may have something different on our hands. It's not a fait accompli, it's not cemented in the sidewalk, or it's not on the guarantee train or anything like that, but we have to have lines in the sand. We have to have areas that either we know it turns bearish or we know it stays bullish for now, 437.92 is our line in the sand. There should be a bull bear battle around that area, give or take, on Thursday. That's assuming they reach that area. If they gap the market up and they don't go down there, that's a different story. Remember, you had Fed minutes today. You have a built-in excuse why the market sold. The market didn't sell immediately upon the release of the Fed minutes, but it's a built-in excuse it's easy for them to say, hey, people were pouring through the report and they got to page 38 of the Fed minutes and they realized X, Y, and Z and therefore we have to sell the market. Now that didn't really happen, but that's the media's version of what happened. And by the way, if the Fed minutes don't work as the excuse, and it should work as the excuse, but if it doesn't, they can always circle back to coronavirus. At this point, it's always a backup excuse. A player brings a backup glove, a backup bat, maybe backup shoes to the event, to the game, whatever it is. That's all in the spirit of being prepared. Well, the media also has to have backup excuses. Coronavirus is a backup excuse. Switching over to the 240-minute chart, taking a gander over here, we see much of the same thing, and we just notice that by the end of the day, they found solace on the 50-period moving average. Doesn't really mean much. 437.92 is certainly more important than the 50-period moving average on just the 240 chart. Is the 120-minute chart telling us anything different than we didn't see before? And the answer is not really. We have a 100-period moving average. That was the solace point today at the end of the day. When you have moving averages culminating around the same price on different charts and they're different moving averages, you can bet your bottom dollar that that area within pennies will be important. By the way, what do we notice here? On the 120-minute chart, we have a breakup candle. Therefore, we have a breakup candle low. It's not at the same exact price, but it's at a close enough price within, let's say, 20 cents, give or take, of 437.92. Okay, that's of note, it's a puzzle piece, it's on the table. Did we have one of those on the 240 chart? And the answer is no, we didn't. A, I would have pointed it out, and B, that's why we look at a variety of different charts. Not all charts are gonna tell you the same thing. 
Sometimes they diverge, but sometimes one chart will give you a clue that another one is not providing. How you doing? How about the hourly chart? What do we have here? Well, we have another breakup candle low, same one from the 120 chart, that's fine. But we also have to scroll back, we have to look to the left and we find a gap. So guess what? We're gonna say 435.50, it's actually 435.53, and there's your gap. We're gonna notate it on the chart, why is that? because it's another spot. Not to say that there won't be a spot in between those two prices, but what I'm doing here is getting the lay of the land. I'm getting the big picture in preparation for the next trading day. I wanna know the big spots. I'll get the small ones in the morning, specifically in preparation for inside the number members. We work with big spots, we work with small spots. We work with all spots. Going back to the daily chart for a moment, I wanna point something else out because we talk about this kind of stuff all the time and you have to train your brain to recognize it when it's available. 435.53 was a gap that we identified. Now there's another reason because we're on a different chart where that spot will be important. What is it? It's not the exact same spot, but it's the general zone. The more things we find in a general zone, the more we begin to build what I like to call a full stack, and it becomes a pile of evidence why the market will first be attracted to that area like a magnet, and also, in the case where a market is falling, find support at said area. If the market's rising, all the same rules apply, but the market will find what? Right, resistance at the same area. So in this case, we have a big breakdown candle and we have a breakdown candle high, 436. It's not the same 435.53, but it's close. So if they're going to 436, they might as well go to 435.53 to fill the gap. Why would they be going to 436? Because that's another area where the market broke out from. In this case, it gapped above it. And you know what we say all the time? Sometimes the market can't beat through a specific area during the trading day. To make it easy on itself, they just decide to gap above or gap below it. Well, that's what happened here. I'm talking about the candle from the 16th of July. So here they rallied back to do what? To run a test of the breakdown candle high. Well, instead of trying to beat through it, they the next day just gapped above it. They came down to run a test, and they've stayed above ever since. So 436 is also a breakout area. 435.53 is a gap. So you bet your bottom dollar that under normal garden variety conditions, 435.50 to 436 is a very important spot to the market. Write that down, put it on a sticky note, you're probably going to need it. All right, I gave you a lot in terms of what's important down south. Now, let's change over to inside the numbers. So what were the early thoughts today? It's hump day, wake up around the flat line. Is the selling done for the week? We don't know yet. It's just one of the thoughts or questions we have to ask in the pre-dawn hours at zero dark 30. Let's get right down to the business of numbers. We've got the same exact spot that will serve as the early pivot. 443.75. Let's get our faculties. Five minute chart, SPY, right of the vertical is today's activity. 443.75 is the horizontal line running across the screen. And the opening print, you see here's the 935 candle, candle ending at 935. The opening print of the day was 442.96. What do they do? They run up to run a test of that important spot. They run a test, they get below it. Later on, they run a test again, and they fail. That was an important spot. Opening the day above or below is the first clue. Remember, they opened below. Even though they ran a test, they opened below. That's important to me anyway. We got some stuff up on the north side. They didn't really go north today. They ended up going south most of the day, or really at least into the end of the day. On the south side of things, the area just above and below 443 is a support zone. Getting below and closing candles below opens the door for yesterday's lows and then the big fat round number of 440, give or take. All right, let's get our faculties one more time. 
we've adjusted the trend lines. 443 is the top trend line. So you see what happened. Here again is the opening print. They opened just below 443, but they rallied the market right back. So 443, give or take a few pennies on either side, was a support zone. How do we know that? How do we confirm that later on? Look what happened. When they came into it, what did they do? They found support and they bounced again. Know thy numbers. Now, the second trend line down, 440.85, that represented yesterday's low. So they ran a test of yesterday's low. They found support temporarily there, bounced it up a little bit, and then killed it into the close. So the 440, A, had it happened earlier in the day, may have had a different outcome, and also the fact that they came here at the yesterday's low price, 440.85, and bounced, that took a little bit of the gusto away from 440. Had they come into 440 in a straight line, may have bounced there, but they were killing them into the close, so there's really no trade there anyway. You're not going to try and pick the market off with 10 or 15 minutes left of the closing bell. All right, let's see what else we have. As the day gets underway, we'll go through the notes. What I urge you to do is pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. See whether or not I'm bonkers or I know my numbers. And by the way, it's not only do I know my numbers, it's also does he really have a handle on how the market works? Because most people tell you stuff. Use this indicator, buy this, sell that. If they're right, they look like a genius. But do they really understand what they're talking about, or are they just throwing darts? I'll leave it for you to decide. We'll let them open the session to get going for a while. It was quiet in the pre-market. At 9.21, I'm taking a look at the tape. I'm saying 442.35, give or take, is a spot where on a quick spike down, it should be support, should provide a trade. There it is, 442.35, they didn't do it. They spiked it up anyway or rallied before that number. They came into it later, spiked it, and bounced the market around that number, but that wasn't the trade. The trade was if they did it quick in the beginning of the day. All right, so it didn't happen. Just of note, 931, it was a crappy selection of stocks on the move today. Nothing was moving. We didn't have really a lot of opportunity on the board. I found one later. We'll talk about that as the commentary goes along. I made an adjustment on ADI that had a lower price from stocks on the move. But once the market opens and it's quiet and I see that there is no flush going on down to a lower number, I can adjust the price sometimes and I did that. 9.35, same spot, 4.42.35, it didn't happen. We know about that. 4.43.20 is resistance. And as a point of reference, again, we've adjusted the line. 443.20 is resistance. And early on, in the first few minutes, you could see the resistance. Once they got above it, they came in for a back test. What happens to resistance? It becomes support until broken again. Know your numbers, and we're moving along. 444 and change is yesterday's high into the close. Can they run a test? Of course. We don't know they will. But closing candles above 443.20 is the first step. So we just looked at the chart. You saw what happened at 443.20. Once they were able to sustain price above that level, then guess what? It opened the door for a 444 or more test. There's your 444. And the numbers are small. They're not far apart. But you have to deal with whatever numbers the market is throwing back at you on any given day. If the range is narrow or it has been narrow, the numbers are going to be closer together. If the range expands, the numbers get farther apart. That's the way the market works. You take what Mrs. Market provides. All right, we're moving along. Let's see what else we have. 444.35, then 444.70 to 96 for running a test purposes. Just stating where they're headed if they continue pushing higher. Doesn't mean you have to be in a trade riding it up there. I'm just telling you what's going on. Sometimes there's a trade at hand. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes we're just providing tour guide type information. And by the way, that was essentially the stopping point for the day up in that zone. We're moving along. Let's see what else we have. You can obviously pause the video, read the notes. The tape was quiet. 10.30, I found a potential opportunity. Hooray. GDX at 31.44. 
stop as an hourly close below $30.90. We're going to circle back to stocks on the move, but since I put it in here, we might as well look at it now. There it is, $31.44. They went a little bit lower. They reversed. They went higher. They provided a minimum required base hit. $31.88 was the high. They came back down at the end of the day. Now, here was the thing. At the end of the day, or midday, with the Fed fake minute announcement, we could get some volatility around GDX. So what you'll see in the notes is, I mentioned that there's a case to keep it, there's a case to pitch it. Not going to get hung up on that now. You can read the notes for yourself if you were interested. We'll circle back to stocks on the move later, but the reality is that was the only thing that happened or hit. Let's finish up the notes, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the charts. We're moving along. Let's see what else we have. More commentary on GDX. We were waiting on the Fed minutes. You get into that zone where the market gets quiet and there are air quotes waiting on the Fed minutes. Phony minutes, I should say. Why do I say phony minutes? I say it tongue in cheek, but the reality is what they're releasing is a document full of commentary that they want you to believe that they discussed at their meeting. It's a version of what was discussed at the meeting, but more in line with what was agreed they would say what was discussed at the meeting. Fed minutes come out, they sent the minutes along with the market goose, they goose the market, they drop the market, the market whips around slash has a kabuki theater moment around this kind of stuff. We know all that. Watch this. 444.20 is the pivot. Well, here, let's scroll down a little bit and recap some stuff from 203 before it happens. So they sent the minutes along with the goose. The trend is your friend. The draw remains up until it's not. At the time, if they're going to send the market up, you say, well, the trend is your friend. They're going to goose the market until or unless they fail. Well, they failed, but you don't anticipate or guess at a failure. If they're going up, you assume the trend is your friend and you go from there. They're looking for an excuse to go higher as they normally are. Where did they go? How about 444.20, which is still overhead resistance until it's not? Now, here's a 15-minute chart, and it doesn't seem like much in real time at the time, but then you look back and you say, wait a minute, 444.20 was a pivot, and guess what? What was the high here? 444.19. Are you kidding me? Are there any accidents or coincidences in the market? And the answer is, no, there isn't. So here we are at 213. Now that's interesting. 444.19 high against 444.20 resistance, and they fall. So I see them fall away, and I'm saying, hey, wait a minute. All of a sudden, there's something going on. Not interested in a long trade unless it was at 440, and that doesn't include the last five or 10 minutes into the end of the day, but that was the only trade that I was interested in mid to late afternoon. You're running out of time on the clock. So we know 444.20 is the pivot. We'll go through the end of the day. I'll let you read the notes. You can go back to the charts to double check the work. We know what happened. We know about the numbers. 442.50 now is the line in the sand for bulls to rally into the end of the day or not, or fail. 442.50. Now there's your 442.50. This is a 15-minute chart. Here's your five-minute chart. You can see the battle a little bit differently on a five-minute chart. That was essentially the battle. They were either going to be saved slash have a rescue operation at 442.50 or they were going to fail and kill them into the close. 442.50 is the line in the sand. Here's the rest or the list of stocks on the move. You see GDX, the other ones didn't hit their entry targets, so they're just wiped off the board. They're no trades. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, here we are right around or above, hovering above the 200 period moving average. So this is not a bullish chart. So what did they do today? First, by the way, and I say it's not a bullish chart. That doesn't mean they won't go higher. What I'm saying is this is not a bullish pattern. There's an area where there could be a rescue operation, but that's it. They're pretty much teetering right now. And we know about the weekly close. So 217.67 is a weekly number. It'd be interesting to see where they are on Friday, but check this out. So they have a tail candle from yesterday come up short of the 200 period moving average. Today, 
They don't go lower, even though the SPY is significantly below yesterday's low. You have to notice this. This is a puzzle piece. It's on the table. Doesn't matter whether you think it's bullish or bearish or you don't know or you don't care. It's a puzzle piece on the table right now. We'll unpack more of it as time goes on. Think about this for a second. Today, the SPY goes significantly below yesterday's low. Okay, the IWM, which incidentally is my favorite market leading indicator, well, they just have a retracement of a tail candle from yesterday and they stay above the 200 period moving average. Okay, so if I'm seeing this, I'm saying, all right, until at least they're below yesterday's low, I can't look at this as too bearish. I also have a big time breakup candle low. They're coming in to run a test of that area. Fair enough, but they're hovering over a 200 period moving average. The more they do that, the less important, in fact, right now, the 200 period moving average isn't really as important as it was yesterday. There's stuff going on in the IWM. There's stuff going on across all markets. You just have to know where to look. The fact that the IWM did not come below yesterday's low today, that's a bullish signal. Doesn't mean they won't do it tomorrow, but for today, it's a bullish sign. Therefore, it's a puzzle piece and it's on the table. Here's the weekly chart. Remember this candle. This is a reversal candle. There were buyers in here. There's going to be defense running out on the field as or if they get toward the low of this particular breakup candle, which is also an extremely important pivot. Why? Because if they get below and they close a week below that particular low, that's the good night Irene scenario. How about the VIX? We hardly ever look at the VIX. It's a weird chart. It never looks normal. It just goes back and forth. It looks like an EKG. Now, here we have a situation where we have a high, we have a lower high, what are we going to have here? Are we going to have a spike up to break that trend, or are we going to have another lower high and go back down again? We don't know yet. We're waiting until tomorrow. But you have to take notice when the VIX up 20% in one day. Here's a monthly chart of the VIX. Remember, and we've talked about this one before, check out this breakup candle. This is the one from February of 2020. So the breakup candle low is around 1338. Fair enough. We don't have to go and visit the low. We can, or they can, but they don't have to. Getting close to the low is essentially running a test of a breakup candle low. Well, what was the low here? The low was 1410. What was the low here? 14 and a quarter. It's pretty close to that low, which once again was 1338. It's a monthly chart. They've consolidated for a year and a half or more than a year and a half. What am I getting at? Well, are we going to see a further decline below this breakup candle low? Or are we seeing one of these situations where we saw a move higher and then they basically consolidated eight time off the clock, came all the way down to run a test of a breakup candle low down in this zone, and now they're going to go back up in the other direction? We don't know, but that's on the table. It's on the docket. It's a puzzle piece. It's a monthly chart. These take a long time to play out. This goes in concert with the concept that the market is going to put in a more pronounced, a more longer term type of high. If that's going to happen, the VIX will have put in a more longer term type of low. What about the folks down at the transportation department? 14,760 is important. Now, all of a sudden, they're back below it. So guess what? When they're back below it, they're kind of back in that bearish camp. Above it, and the bulls can run price up higher, like up into that 15,300 neighborhood. They still have to get through the 100 period moving average, but what they just did was they ran up to it or close to it, and now they're coming back down. So we could say that at least from a short-term perspective, they would be recocking the weapon, and if they went back up toward that 100 period moving average, the expectation under normal garden variety conditions would be to go higher, get through that moving average. To go where? To the 15,350, give or take. Silicon Valley, the Q people. So now this is the second day in a row they've given up the 20 period moving average. 
So one day doesn't make a trend. Two days begins to form a trend. We'll see what happens on the third day. Remember, to put things in perspective, here's the weekly chart. The trend is your friend until she dumps you. We also have a breakup candle. The low is 342. They've been eating time off the clock for a few weeks inside of that breakup candle. Are they coming down to run a test of that low and will it hold? If they get closer to that low, 354, 353, in that neighborhood, that's what you have to start eyeballing. Depending on when that happens, you have to see where the 20 period moving average also on this weekly chart is at the time. There's your spot on the daily chart, 352. It's a little bit far away. There's a lot of stuff in between the 50 period moving average and there's stuff slightly below that. There's another breakup candle. So somewhere in here, this vicinity of 355, 354 is going to provide support. But if you get a debacle and they're flushing the market, they pull the rug out, the trap door, all that stuff, 352 is going to be really, really special. The financials, the XLF. So here, they broke out to new highs, and now for the last few days, they're coming down, they're back inside, they've recaptured those former highs. Basically, we had a trade in here, we rode it up to 38, they went higher, they're back inside of 38, they're coming back to run a test of what? The 20 period moving average, and to fill this gap over here, that's garden variety market behavior. How do we know that's going to happen? Well, we have a full stack. We have a moving average, which they'll spike it through. We have a gap, which they will fill. And the reason they'd be down there, not only because of the gap, but because that's the most recent area that the market broke out from. So what are they going to do? They're going to come back to run a test. And by the way, you have more moving averages in that zone, right around 37, below 37. In that space, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. So when you have those spots where there's a lot of quote unquote stuff going on down there, they become not only support, but they're also magnetic. Price will be drawn to those areas. Smash Mouth, bad day yesterday, bad day today. Smash Mouth is getting killed. Pretty good proxy for the tech sector or tech space as a whole. We'll see what happens at this 100 period moving average. Here's something interesting. Today is one of those days where the SMH or Smash Mouth is on time. Of note, puzzle piece on the table, put it on a sticky note, Smash Mouth is on time, which means over the next day or so, we should be looking for signs and signal of a trend change. Doesn't mean it has to happen, it can happen, it's the awareness, it begins to create a potential full stack. Why is that? Well, you have a moving average here, you have other stuff, and time is more important than price. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.